if. What's up guys, Nick the Informative Fisherman here and today we're back out at Party Lakes Media Day put on by Jackson Rancheria and Ultimate Bass Radio. This morning we're starting off with Jason King Cannon and Alan Fong right here. We started off, it was real overcast and rainy so we didn't pull the camera out too early and we were looking around, it was pouring all night and now these fish are acting a little bit weird. Yeah, they're starting to show up. They're starting to. <laughs> Yeah, we're jumping around now and instead of uh we were shaking some worms just trying to get you guys some bites to show on film but now we're uh we're swinging some big baits uh jason makes some custom glide baits that we'll show you guys too um alan's been in the big bait industry for a long time and all baits no for pole. that matter right <laughs> yeah. no pull right here he's actually willing them in that's yeah. how good he is i still stick with the rod and reel and, yeah. and baits to try to get them in but now hopefully we'll be able to show you guys a big fish um, I'll ask the pros, the elite pros that are here today, um, some questions and intermix them into this film for you guys. And hopefully we can get you guys on a couple more fish and get you educated a little bit more on how to do it out here. Yep. And there's one of those big glide baits right there. This is a the fish game. All right, let's go wing them. <laughs> let's go get them. Let's go. You know, you don't think of a tail changing, you know, changing much, but it does. Oh, yeah. So that's the only thing they bite here, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, today is the only thing we that's we can get. Much. We've been fighting them pretty good today. If you're looking for, you know, 12 pounds for your but, best five. That's what you got to throw, you know. Yeah, these it's, little one and three quarter pounders <laughs> here, they love it. Yeah. But they're you can weigh them in though. This is this is 14 <laughs> yeah. inches, so they're just legal. Toss that in your bag they're, not <laughs> they're, looking. they're legal, so you'll have, you'll have yeah. five pounds. That's a limit. <laughs> you'll have five pounds. So. Legal in there. so yeah, it's it's pretty good. Never but, really coordinated. Uh, Runs kind of funny. Real sissy sissy. It's interesting to see them all in or not. All right, guys, so we fought out the rain, started pouring on us again. We threw the worm, we kept lobbing big swim baits like these here, and uh, we got a couple of tail grabs, a couple of short strikes, hitting the worm, hitting a little Kitek swim bait. Just couldn't get anything to stay on. Uh, we're gonna head back in now, get to the second half, go chomp on some hot dogs and come back out. Uh, but if we run into uh, these fellows later and they got something, I'm going to have them hold up a fish for you because I want to see a fish right now. If I don't I care if it's away. this big or this big. I just want to see one and touch it. All right, guys. So the rain started pouring on us so hardcore when we were out there. Our time really got cut down bad. We tried everything from fishing points, humps, ledges. Um, Alan worked a drop shot, a little kite tech on a jig head. Jason and I threw the big swim baits around. Couldn't even get a follower, but one maybe. Um, I also cranked the 10XD with uh, no luck. I think Alan had one come off on the drop shot. Once we got back, yeah, we realized that's what was going on. The drop shot was a ticket. Aaron Martin's got him on the drop shot. Shaw got one good uh, largemouth, about five pounds, on a sexy dog, walking it up on a flat um, early. Um, but that's what we needed to do. We needed to uh, work the drop shot that day a little bit more in that deeper water since we had that cold front. Um, the night before and a ton of rain pushing in a lot of those fish that were actively feeding um, Backed off and started associating sitting down on the bottom on those deeper ledges But uh, those guys who were willing to finesse them figured them out Aaron's talking about building tolerance to habanero peppers like Pam does That's not happening. Not for me No, it just takes some time. I get used to it after crying for five days yeah, straight. Yes, but We bring Aaron out to talk about <laughs> robo worms drop shotting Hooks, We're light line, rod, right now, man. And all he wants to talk about is spicy. Right. I love the spice yeah. in California. They have a lot of spice here. You know? <laughs> <laughs> we get salsa right here in this restaurant, so usually pretty spicy. I like that. That's good. Yeah. That's perfect. You ever do hot food challenges? No, but I know how to condition yourself for it. How'd you? Oh. Eat habaneros and work up to ghost pepper. Already <laughs> <laughs> Okay, yeah. Shaw's definitely fatter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's me. Yeah, yeah. It's all the age. <laughs> Mr. Cheeto himself. <laughs> Are you rolling on this? All right, guys, we're back. It's the second half of Media Day. We're back out with Kent Brown, the host, Ultimate Bass Radio, and the host of Media Day here. I mean, Kent pretty much uh, controls the whole ordeal here and makes it all happen for us and does all the legwork, which is really nice. We do. We have great sponsors from Jackson Ranchery and, and we Party got Lake. My personal favorite Bass Elite Series guy, Mr. Shaw Grigsby. Say something clever, Shaw. Cheetos. 
are delicious. <laughs> I thought it was clever. Right? <laughs> That's good. Yeah, yeah. That's what happens when you serve them lunch at the half day break. I work, I work for food. That's <laughs> really it. That's what the sign said. We picked them up over there on the bank. Oh, wait, wait. Sean, I have to do this. Huh? Triton. Triton. That's logo placement. That's yeah. What Product that. placement. That's what you got to do here. That's right. That's, That's what right. it's about. So what, uh, what's, the, what's the intention here? What are we going to do in the second half? Uh, I'm going to sit here and watch Shaw catch a big one off the bed that he's already seen. And he's got awesome. the rod rig ready to go. Sight, the, sight fishing the, legend, man. The best sight fisherman on the Elite Tour. I like how we build you up. All the pressure. <laughs> but we did find one, and we're going to go try to catch it. So we're going to watch Shaw Grigsby firsthand pick apart a bed fish. So let's go do it. Sounds like fun. All we'll right, awesome. Hang with us, guys. We'll be right back. Attention all anglers, it's time to start displaying your weapons of big fish destruction in style. With the coolest rod racks to ever to hit the market, the 916 Rod Rack. Don't be caught slipping stacking your expensive gear in the corner. Treat those babies with the love that they deserve. From upright racks to ceiling mounts to wall mounts, they got you covered. So don't go wrong guys, get yourself a 916 Rod Rack. I'm taking these bro. Attention Northern California anglers, have you been to boat country in Escalon? With one of the largest selections of welded aluminum fishing boats from Weldcraft, Low and Hughescraft, chances are they've got the right fishing boat for you. And did I mention they have a full service center to take care of all your boating, repair and maintenance needs? If you're a boat owner or just looking to become one, you owe it to yourself to check these guys out. Visit BoatCountryUSA.com or stop on by. I'll see you there. Ever tried pulling a planer board next to your boat when trolling or fishing from a swift current bank? If not, you're missing out on one of the most phenomenal fish catching machines on the market today. With Yellowbird planer boards pulling your lines perpendicular to your boat, you can't help but catch more fish. Find out more by visiting www.yellowbirdproducts.com. Did you know that Beeline makes specialized lines for all your fishing needs? From the super strong abrasive resistant CXX or the low stretch super stealthy CX Premium. Or maybe you're looking for invisibility or super bite detection with Beeline's 100% fluorocarbon. No matter what your needs, Beeline's got it covered. To find out more, visit Beeline.com. Beeline, baby. So Shaw's actually working a bed fish right up behind this can yeah. over here. It's right up on that that platform. It's nice and warm. Those fish move up there early. <laughs> no, no, they left. It's not on that bed. So Shaw found another bed yeah. over here. Apparently that fish pulled off, moved over here somewhere. So Shaw is known for sight fishing. So we're going to sit back and just, just enjoy and watch here and let Shaw do his thing enjoy over the here. Flight. Yeah, we're, we're going to enjoy the ride over here. What bait are you using right there, Shaw? I, I just uh, put on a little baby rage crawl. Baby rage. And it's, and it's white. And the only reason I put them white, the fish is sitting right over here. Uh -huh. the, I put white on so I can see it. It's not so the fish, the fish doesn't care. Get that indicator when they take I it. I can see it. I can see when it takes it, but I can see the position of it. That's what I want most. Okay. Is to know where that bait is so that I can... Uh, when you're seeing the position, are you looking for the fish's reaction if you're hitting the bed? Exactly. Is that what it is? Exactly. He, he'll show you what gets him excited you know coming to it left right center you right. know where where does he react to it and that's i can see Very where nice. if i have a dark bait i can't right now here's a little one on bed uh with the conditions slick now you know i may have to really position my boat and pay attention to where i need to cast to catch this one but i mean that's how quick it takes us to find another one is just you know drive up the bank for 10 seconds and find one actually looks like there's one right here in the pile in the middle they'll build in the middle of brush piles down there he's looking oh, yeah, he's yeah. nosing not like we're on top of him are we <laughs> <laughs> can you see him down there yeah yeah it's pretty funny like we're the motors and he's going to be eating a prop in a minute so oh, that's, here, here comes the female. Oh my gosh, look at that. So that's two in a matter of seconds. Oh, see the male leave and take care. I don't know if you could see it, but the female came in. The, there's the male. He's still looking. Yeah. So you can see there's a lot of really nice fish that are spawning right now. And what I do in the spawn time is just take off. And I go until I find those. And I say, you know, okay, this is the biggest, or I find my five biggest that I want to catch. You know, looking for five, sixes, sevens, eights, tens, whatever you can find. And uh, that was just pretty cool to watch that and watch the female come in. So you can see the female's holding off, male's on the bed. Now let's see if we can't find this one, which is actually a really nice one. 
and it's a big bed, but man, this wind is going to kill it. Okay, there's the bed. That's a pig. I mean, it really is. That's a pig. There's a... Uh, while we're sitting here doing nothing, because we'll do nothing for a while until this fish just locks in and sets down. And so now, Shawi, you know with sight fishing, of course, polarized glasses like we're wearing. We're wearing the Strike King ones right here. And I know polarized glasses is imp imperative to sight fishing, getting the sun to your back, having a bright colored lure. What are like some of the more advanced techniques to sight fishing that you think a lot of anglers overlook and where experts excel? Because everybody can sight fish if you got a hood and polarized glasses and a cap and a white bait. But what, what really separates the difference between a good sight fisherman and a not so good sight fisherman? Not going to use the word bad. <laughs> <laughs> and that's true because sight fishing is sight fishing. It's, you know, bed fishing is bed fishing. But sight fishing, you can sight fish in clear water in September, October. Well, November, sure. Yeah. You know, and, that, and I do a lot of that. So, um, but it's probably patience. Um, it is probably the biggest single thing is to have patience and and um, you know just pay attention to that fish to the movement of the fish uh, that fish is going to tell you what it wants mm -hmm. you know whether it wants uh, something moving real slow real fast you know you're, you're uh, you know when I'm fi sight fishing in the fall it's being stealthy making the cast way out in front of the fish mm -hmm. you know letting the fish not even know the bait's there and then all of a sudden it comes by and it jiggles and they just go crazy so you know that's it's much more finesseful when they're not on bed bed fishing you shoot sometimes you can get by with 65 pound braid and plunk <laughs> it in there and it's, yeah it's not really about the line it's it's about right. irritating them into striking now the thing that you're doing interesting here is i don't think i've ever worked a bed fish from 35 40 feet away yeah, I, I actually want to work it as far away as I can stay. Uh, I like to have visibility, okay. but sometimes you, you can't. You know, so let's say I, I got this fish marked, I'm in a tournament. Mm -hmm. I may make that first cast from way out here, you know, as long as I can make it. Mm -hmm. Let it set out, you know, throw a Strike King Ocho on it. Just let it settle out, you know, pay attention, pick up the line, you know, move it a quarter inch or something. Usually they'll just pick it up and go because they have no clue that anything's there. Sure, sure. Uh, then, you know, as you get, you move in a little closer, a little closer, watch the fish, watch the movement, and uh, and go from there. So, that, you know, that's kind of what I'm doing right now. This fish was actually in there and uh, when we were back, back here, and we're mm -hmm. slowly getting pushed by the wind a little closer, which is inevitable that that happens. Sure. And, um, but the fish, the female on this is is stout yeah i see her cruising around so uh there it's a uh, really awesome and you know right now we got clouds overcast people think that's really bad for sight fishing it's not you yeah. know, you, and that's why strike king came out with this lens a cloud lens what is it kind of like an amber right it is it's a uh, it's an amber and you can kind of look through the lens and yeah, see, I see it. that too when i was wearing it this morning even dark and overcast i was like oh that's nice it yeah. didn't really hinder my visibility much it's, it's a very very bright it collects light so it it helps you uh i like it for sight fishing regardless of my light conditions mm -hmm. that's kind of the lens that i designed ages ago for sight fishing was to have that amber because it collects light and makes it really good you just pick out detail when you have move. uh when you have this guy behind a pair of polarized glasses try them try them telling you right now try them all right let's see if we can get this fish to go yeah right now she is not being cooperative but it's still a little you know a little rough in the sense of wind and stuff, uh, ripple. So the ripple kills you. Yeah. And uh, I'm just easing a little closer, a little closer. You can see we just, you know, about a foot every few minutes mm -hmm. and just let the boat, you know, kind of ease in on them. Yeah, I know a lot of the time people get it confused when, when they're bed fishing and they, and they come in and they see the male there and they're all excited. Oh, there's a fish locked on a bed well, they probably don't realize, just like Shaw's doing right here, staying way far back off. The female's generally around there too, but when you come in tight, the female's much more skittish and spookish than right. the than the male is. So, I, I could see how that could relate to you know getting a lot extra and larger fish in the boat, getting the female to go before the male. Yeah. See, now we get some sunshine. There we go. And when you're looking out there and looking at the bed, there is no fish uh, that I see right now on the bed, which is mm -hmm. disappointing. Mm -hmm. uh, the male might be there, but I still have enough ripple to where it really keeps me uh, keeps me out. So, 
you know, then you have to decide whether it's worth your time to stay and work her and hope she comes back and mm -hmm. all that. When we first pulled up, she was there. And you can see what she's holding in. Sure, I mean, this sure. Is, this is what's cool about, you know, bedding fish in general is they like to have some cover around them. And uh, this one, obviously, this is her home, and that's where she's bedding. Nice. And she's a good one. Hang with us, guys. We'll be right back. Been thinking about trying out kayak fishing or already into it and just want some sick upgrades for your rig? It's time to check out the Headwaters Kayak Shop. Come pick the brains of their knowledgeable staff and make sure to ask about their awesome demo program to find the right kayak for you. Or stop in and rent one with Lodi Lake right down the street. The Headwaters Kayak Shop fits all your yakking needs. Tell them if sent ya. Have you been to RustyLures.com? Did you know they offer free shipping on anything over $29.99? And with all the latest and greatest in bass fishing gear from punching tackle, umbrella rigs, swim baits, and you name it, there's really no reason for you not to be getting the best deal online today. So go to www.RustyLures.com. Did you ever wish for an RC boat when you were a kid? And do you have a passion for fishing? Well, guess what? It's time to do them both at the same time. With RCFishingWorld.com's RC Fishing Pole, it's time to be a kid again. So visit www.rcfishingworld.com today. There she comes. There she comes. What do you think, Kent? Oh, yeah, she's turning. I'm thinking she's seven, you know. Yeah, she's a, she's a, she's a she's nice she's fish. A um, fish either way. And, you know, it's just nice to see her every now and then, but she is really, the temperament of this fish, you know, looking at what's going on right now, temperament of that fish is how much time do you want to spend on it? <laughs> um, you know, in a tournament, I probably would go, well, let's, let's see, but she is not being real aggressive and not really holding tight and not, you know, not coming in. That one back there, you know, immediately when the male's looking and the bait's Ooh. bouncing in there, yeah. she's coming. I'm coming. I'm coming to help. Uh -huh. This one is not so much, but there she is. She's there in she it. There she is, yep. And we have an opportunity when she shows herself like that. Now, if we can just kind of get her to focus on the bait rather than us, which is what she's doing yeah. right now. She's turning slightly. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I won Harris Chain a few years back, uh, the elite tournament in Florida, mm -hmm. and uh, I was sight watching fishing. That one. And what was really cool is I caught, you know, like every fish on a rage crawl, mm -hmm. and but one. And and I had this big fish, and she's on the bed, and she wouldn't look at anything. I mean, I threw everything from big worms and big ochos, you name it, everything mm -hmm. I could think of, little baits, tubes, everything I could think of, pulled out of my box, and finally I tied on a little rego swim bait. Mm -hmm. Threw it over there, you know, whatever, six, six inch deal, and Something threw it over bigger. there, let it settle down, swam it out, and she just paddled up behind it, and I said, so quit eating my I, eggs. I got you. <laughs> and, and the next cast, I just threw it in there, and she choked it, and I caught her, and that was a 10 nice. even. So, oh. you know, so you take a, you take a, a fish that's tough, and sometimes it takes that, but you have to have mm -hmm. a huge arsenal of baits to be able to catch one. Yeah. Uh, you know, sometimes it's easy. You just throw a bait in there and they eat it. Yeah. Other times it's everything you've got. You throw everything and the kitchen sink <laughs> before you catch them. In yep. this case, the kitchen sink was the rego. Come on, man. Look at that. Stubborn. Yeah. And as always, is no matter what you have going on, the wind is always going to push the back end of the boat to the bed every time yeah so don't get yourself in a position where it swings your yeah, stern of the boat times, over the bed huh? you know of course in this case situation power poles it's so deep they don't do you much good mm -hmm. but um in most situations that we're fishing you just drop your power poles and you're good um and that's the that's the easy thing well we never could get her to eat so it was time to head back in and see what everybody else did usually i'm a stippler about making sure i show some fish catches on a film but with the priceless information shaw was willing to share with us i had to show you guys this episode and hopefully you still picked up a few awesome tips roll it up look what happens all the air comes out right well not that look at this ah. tuck it inside the hood look at and this now when guy. you put your rain suit in your boat you haven't taken up much room and you do the same thing with the with the bibs, except the bigs just compressed to another roll about this size, and it just really? comes in the back like this. Yeah, yeah. she's yeah. left, she's facing to the right. You see her? Yeah. When you're bank fishing, you you want to have Shaw Griggs be out when you're bank fishing. <laughs> it tends to help. So we had Shaw fly in uh, to just help for, us with this bank fishing just spot. Just for bank yeah, fishing. Yeah, we flew yeah. Shaw in specially for this one. Mike. All right. So it turns out when 
Jason and Alan went back out. They found some fish. We were just the jinx today. Let's uh, let's see him, Jason. Let's see him now, Jason. There we go. That's a nice one. A little red up on her tail. How'd you get her? Uh, actually, Alan caught it. Alan caught her. Alan, how'd you get her? Swim bait. Swim bait? What? Kitech? Quite a few uh, followers. Quite a few followers. Kitech or a big bait? Big one. Oh, not not real good. Wish wish me. Yeah. That one. That right there is like 18 pounds. That's like a 32. <laughs> on a day like yeah, this. you know. Now on a day like this, ridiculously tough. It's good to get some fish. Yeah, that's for sure. All right, Fred. So you caught them today? A few? Yeah, yeah. You know, we went out and did a little finesse fishing offshore. Yeah. Um, it was a big flat and it just had a steep vertical break on it. You could see the, the dark water. And um, while the other guy was throwing a top water, I just fired out a nail weighted Jean LaRue salt flicker. There you go. Know, weightless, you know, or nice nail weight. Small, just large mouth? down there. Caught, first one I caught was a little large mouth. Mm -hmm. And then I caught a three and a half pound smallmouth, then I caught another smallmouth, and then lost another one. So, so was your go whole goal knowing after last night's rain and cold drop that it was gonna be tough? You just figured you throw throw the plastic early. No, you know we didn't. We, we came out a little later uh -huh. than everybody else, so we only yeah. got a little bit of time. And uh, since one of us was already throwing a top water, I figured I'd go down to the bottom. Uh, I was winging big baits the whole time and couldn't get Gosh. nothing to go. I got one tail grab. That was it, man. <laughs> yeah, I wish I wish I was throwing big baits, but <laughs> yeah. I did throw the big depths 250. Got You got to have sun up to sun down here, man. Did you get any followers? Uh, no, I didn't. But I, I didn't make very many casts with it. Um, kind of one of those big baits you kind of want to be running the boat when you're fishing it you know yep. you don't yeah, want somebody sure. right next to you because you might yeah. whack them in the head with it <laughs> yeah, been there been there so come on i don't have my jersey on dude. i'm i'm, a, I'm professional we'll do that we'll take <laughs> wait, 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 wait. wait 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 can't was in the way perfect <laughs> <laughs> well guys we're back now we we pulled up we're we're back in the parking lot to do some interviews and ask some questions uh, it was tough out here. Shaw got a couple this morning. A couple other guys caught them. How'd you catch your fish this morning, Shaw? I uh, caught one top water and one uh, drop shot. And I was winging top water uh, all morning long with no swim luck. Baits. I lost one on a swim bait. Had a That's the difference bait. between a, just a, like a ridiculously good looking guy and an incredible angler. See, that's what, that's what it is. <laughs> that's what it is. That's totally that's what, what it was. That's what it is. That's but, like, you didn't get bit, right? But you got the 995 <laughs> version of the Shaw Grigsby How to Catch a Bed Fish. 995. Yeah, so we can charge your viewers yeah. so, for that. So don't pay too much. Yeah. No, guys, I appreciate you watching. Uh, we didn't get to show you any big fish on film, but I'll ask you all a couple more questions, you know, and get you guys maybe informed a little bit more. I'll incite you more on some tips on the bottom of the screen here and just formative fish try to fill you in on what happened today. Informative but, uh, fishermen make a good, that'd be a good yeah. show. And we'll call it informative fishermen. No, I winged some big swim baits around. I had a tail grab early, didn't get the fish. I think there was a couple other swim bait fish caught today. Uh, we had a big heavy rain last night and the temperature dropped Amazing. down real low. It never rains. Yeah, in never. California, it's it been weird for us. Shaw brought it with him. Uh, so that was nice. We appreciate the rain, Shaw. So it's greatly appreciated. Thanks. But uh, no, hopefully uh, you guys still enjoyed the show and I appreciate you guys watching. Thanks, guys. <laughs>